In this lesson, we'll look at the difference between the sequences we did the other day and a series. So this is a sequence when the numbers are just written out like this. A series is basically just a fancy word for a sum. So the equivalent one written as a series just has plus signs all throughout it. That's what we're going to take a look at is adding this stuff up. So yesterday we talked about how a term formula looks like this. And that's what I'm going to list off just to give you an idea how this formula works. So this would be um, the first term, second term, third term, fourth term, and so on, um, up to n terms. But then what I'm going to do is multiply by the common ratio all the way through. And it's not obvious why we're doing that just yet, but watch what happens then when I do an old-fashioned elementary school vertical subtraction. On this side of the equal sign, I'm going to have the sum minus the sum times the common ratio is equal to, well, all of these ones are going to cancel out because I'm subtracting them. And all that I'm actually left with is the first and the last one there. And remember, it's, it's a negative, so this is actually being subtracted. So to tidy this up, the sum for n terms, I guess I should put my n in there, is going to be equal to this mess if I factored it out. Maybe I'll try and write it a little neater for you. S n. Now all I have to do is divide by 1 minus the common ratio. So I would get S n is equal to this formula. Okay. So that's the technique that um, provides it. For you, this is what's going to be handy to know about is this first formula here. So let's take a look at how we could apply that formula for a geometric series. Determine the sum of the first 10 terms for each of these. So what I need to know is I know that n equals 10. I need to find a common ratio. So any term divided by the previous. And the first term is a 1 in this example. So I can substitute that in. The sum of 10 terms is going to be 1 times 1 minus 3 to the 10 over 1 minus 3. And I end up with a sum of 29,524. So similarly in the next example, again, we just need to pick out what's the common ratio here. So any one divided by its previous. I don't want to work with fractions, so I'm going to pick these as my... Uh, pair, or I could pick these two, but uh, so 6 divided by negative 2, so that will be negative 3, and the first term is 2 thirds. So the sum of 10 terms will be the first term times 1 minus the common ratio. I'm going to use an extra set of brackets here. You'll need those in the calculator as well. I'm sorry, that should be a plus sign there because I'm doing um, minus negative 3. So I end up with negative 9841.333 or if you prefer it with the fraction 9841 and a third. If you didn't get that number then chances are you probably didn't put it in the calculator properly. So be careful. In my calculator, I usually add an extra set of brackets here. But if you're not getting the right numbers back from your calculator, you'll definitely want to ask about that. Usually we can correct it just showing you how to put some extra brackets into this problem. Okay. So this time, we could have a problem like this where I give you all the terms and I ask you to add them up. And the problem is I don't know how many terms are there. But there is an easy way to deal with this. And we're going to start by taking a look at the term formula and seeing how we can get a different form out of it. Well, this is the same thing as if I just expand the top.
looks like that. And that's the first term. But this one here, it's hard to recognize, but I can actually write it as n minus 1 and times it by the common ratio. So they're the same thing. And the reason I wanted to do that is this here, that is the last term in the series. Right, so we'd call that Tn. Um, so I'm using L for last in the formula over here. So I'll do that. So I'm going to rewrite that then as the first term minus the last term times the common ratio over 1 minus r. So that's how we, it's not just magic, it does actually make sense where it comes from. But the nice part about it then is that when I'm given a question like this, I don't have to do all that solving and trying to figure out what term number this is. I don't need to know that. I can just use this formula. So this will be the sum I'm looking for is the first term minus the last term times the common ratio. Um, in this case, any term divided by its previous, common ratio is going to be negative 1 fifth. And then I'll divide it all by 1 minus the common ratio. Okay. And again, I'm going to put an extra set of brackets in my calculator there. Um, and I'll probably put another set right there too, just to make sure that I end up with the right um, calculation from the calculator. So in this case, I end up with uh, 104.17. Okay, so we'll just play around with manipulating that formula. The general term is given here, and I want the first 15 terms. So if I'm looking for S15, here is the first term, and here is the common ratio. So together then, I can put it into my problem, and I end up with a formula I can solve for. And this gives me 163,835. In a geometric sequence, the fifth term, so I'll just write that down. OK, and I know that the common ratio is 4. So I'm going to use my term formula to try and figure out the missing piece, which is what's the first term. So if I know that 1, 0, 2, 4 is the fifth term, it must be the first term times the common ratio applied four times. So that means 1, 0, 2, 4 is 256 times the first term. So the first term must be equal to 4. Now I can use my formula, the sum of seven terms, will be 1 minus 4 to the seventh over 1 minus 4. And that gives me 21,844. So last one, a bit of a practical one. If you invest $1,000 per year for 50 years and you were able to earn 6%, how much money would you have when you retired? So that original $1,000 is going to be worth some interest on it. Then the next year, you'd only get 49 years worth of interest. And we'd keep going. And you'd have something that looked like this. Your $1,000. It would keep shrinking down because you have less time until that retirement kicks in. And then your last thousand dollars, maybe right when you retired, you'd have none. So let's assume that you're not going to, well, that's fine. We'll leave it like that. So then this one here, if I look at it, I can see uh, my first term is a thousand and the common ratio is 1.06. And the number of terms is going to go all the way up to 51 because this would be um, applied n minus one times. You can count them on your hands, toes, and all that other stuff, 
but there's going to be 51 terms there. So I can figure out the sum of 51 will be the $1,000 I started with. And multiplied through like this. So let's see if we're rich. Not bad. Looks like we have $308,756.70. Considering that we only put away fifty thousand or fifty-one thousand to start, uh, that's a pretty good uh, nest egg there.